Welcome to the Ridgefield Fire Department Nausea Vomiting Protocol Paramedic in Service for Zofran. In this program, we're going to use this video as an overview and a description of the protocol and the medication Zofran. We're going to talk about the use, indications, and contraindications of Zofran, a little medication safety, review the protocol itself, the way it's written into the Connecticut Region 5 2008 version paramedic protocols, and we're going to take the written exam once you've completed this video. Now, what is a Dancitron? That is the medication Zofran. You've probably heard of Zofran before. It's been used to treat nausea and vomiting in cancer patients. FDA approved Zofran in 1991. So this is a medication that's been around for a while. In fact, it's been in our protocols overall since 2008, just recently been approved for uh, local use. It's currently in stock at the Danbury Hospital Pharmacy, and Zofran will be replacing Compazine here in Ridgefield. Now, the Zofran does come in a couple of different forms, and we're going to be talking about both of those forms. The ODT, or Oral Dissolving Tablet, sort of a sublingual tablet, as well as IV Zofran. Now, right now, we're going to start off using the IV Zofran, but if, as in a lot of other places across the country, we have a hard time getting the IV Zofran, we may have to switch over to the oral tablets. If you have feedback about a preference for one to the other, let me know. Um, as I say, right now, this medication covers both. The dosing and how they work is exactly the same. It's identical, whether it's IV or under the tongue. So... How does it work? Zofran basically is a serotonin blocker. It does a whole bunch of different things, but that's really what it comes down to. And it works as a very receptor selective antagonist for uh, serotonin. It effectively works on the vagus nerve and the vagus nerve activates the vomiting center in the medulla oblongata. The thing it's, that's actually very good about Zofran is it doesn't have an effect on dopamine or the muscarinic receptors. It's very a uh, selector uh, excuse me, a uh, receptor selective. So that means it doesn't have a lot of side effects. That's really what it comes down to. Zofran does what you want it to do. It helps stop the nausea and vomiting without a lot of potential for a lot of crazy side effects. So how does it interact with other diseases that the patient might have? Well, as you see right here, pretty well. Schizophrenia, Parkinson's, alcoholism, all medications that uh, are that relate to serotonin uptake. So you see the information right here, a 2006 trial indicated Zofran has value in the treatment of schizophrenia. Uh, for Parkinson's, Zofran might be a possible treatment for psychosis resulting uh, in very advanced Parkinson's states. And for alcohol, uh, Zofran helps lower the cravings for alcohol, especially in early onset alcoholics. So it's the kind of medication, the way it interacts with uh, serotonin, it works pretty well for a wide variety of indications. The way we're going to be using it, though, is to treat intractable vomiting. Now, the way that it's worded in our protocols is refractory to oxygen administration. Now, I realize that oxygen administration does not treat nausea or vomiting. But what they're saying is the point of the way this is worded is make sure that you do all the other things that you need to do before you're jumping to giving Zofran. So how might we wind up using it? Well, if a patient has motion sickness or acute abdominal pain or has nausea from another medication that you're going to be giving. So what medication might that be? And, you know, here we say morphine. Uh, it's very common for those kind of narcotic analgesics to produce nausea, and Zofran can help with that. Uh, sometimes they're even given um, as a one-two punch. We're really looking for the patient who is feeling nausea secondary to that morphine administration, and Zofran can help with that. So here's the exact protocol itself right out of the Region 5 protocols. And uh, again, number one, primary paramedic care, of course. Uh, second to that, we want to find out about uh, the hemodynamic stability, one to 10 on the pain scale. Basically, we want to make sure that we've taken care of our other priorities. And I think that's something that I really like to see here for our training because we don't want to overemphasize. I, I love the idea of Zofran. I think it's going to be a great medication to add to the tools that we have, but we want to make sure that in training, when we're just talking about Zofran, we don't imply that you get a patient with nausea. We're just going to worry about the nausea. We're just going to pu uh, push the Zofran. So we get everything else in line. And there you go. Now, you also see that morphine sulfate is in there because this is technically the acute abdomen protocol. That's what all of this stuff goes together. But when you look, as we'll see in a minute, in the Region 5 protocols, then they talk about uh, a Danistron 
and uh, Zofran administration later on, what they're going to be talking about is other uses for it as well. So it's not outside of the protocols. It basically fits in between the protocols. And you also see that all of this is listed above where it says contact medical oversight. That means Zofran is on standing orders. We can administer it before contacting medical oversight. Now, adverse effects. That's one of the great things about Zofran. Better than Compazine and some of the other medications that are out there. There's no significant drug interactions. It's well tolerated. Um, there is some risk of headache and constipation, maybe a little bit of dizziness, but this is stuff that's going to be much lesser typically than the actual nausea and vomiting. You know, if somebody's got uncontrollable nausea, I'm sure that um, the risk of a slight headache to get rid of that nausea and vomiting, that's, that's a bet that they're going to take. Now, some things that we have to mention, even though they're very unusual side effects, is uh, fatigue, diarrhea, blurred vision, and possibly syncope. Uh, if you push it too rapidly, it's a medication that we push very, very slowly. The only other one that's really significant, even though, again, it's reported as very rare, is prolonged QT segment. Now, we're going to be monitoring this patient on the cardiac monitor to make sure. Uh, this is something that, of course, is it's routine paramedic care. So if you're going to be giving Zofran, that they should be on the cardiac monitor. But it's important to know um, because sometimes with medications with very little side effects like Zofran, we tend to think, oh, well, it's no big deal. Uh, I'm just going to push the Zofran. That'll be enough. And that's all I'm going to worry about. We don't have to put them on a pulse ox or anything else. We do want these patients on a cardiac monitor as part of routine paramedic care. Now, contraindications. One, makes Zofran a great medication. Allergy to Zofran, only contraindication. That's it. Or other 5-HT3 antagonists, basically, uh, they're most likely to tell you, I'm allergic to Zofran. So, now obviously a question that we ask any patient for any medication. Now, uh, Odansetron is administered, as we said before, IV and ODT, or oral dissolving tablets. It's a sublingual wafer. And it's supplied just like you see it here. Now, you'll notice that the blister packs that we show right there show a 4 milligram and an 8 milligram tablet. That's because um, Zofran can be administered up to 8 milligrams. Our protocols say 4 milligrams. We'll only be getting the 4 milligram tablets if we get the ODTs anyway. So our initial dose, 4 milligrams. Our maximum dose, four milligrams. That's how, what it comes down to. The other thing to note about these blister packs, again, it will just be the four milligram tabs if we wind up getting them, but they're very, very fragile tablets. So this is not a regular blister pack tab where you peel the back and then you just push the tablet through. You want to peel off the back and then the wafer, it's really more of a wafer than a tablet, kind of falls out of the back. Now, what do we have here? The regular five rights, the right patient, right drug, right route, right dose, and right time. The same things we review anytime we talk about any medication administration, just worth reviewing here. Now, this is uh, additional information that we want to know. Again, four milligrams is the dose, whether it's IV or whether it's oral dissolving tablets. Um, right now, we can give it IV or IO. It's the same thing, like with any medications, we can give it IO just like we can give it I IV, although I don't anticipate a lot of people are going to be uh, starting IO lines to get rid of some nausea, but it is an option if it's uh, something you already have in place. Um, you can administer it IM as well. Of course, it's a much slower uptake time. So it's not something that's in the protocols right now. But if it's uh, some, you know, it's an option that we have available to us, we want to make sure that it's in the protocol. So we're working on that. Likewise with the oral dissolving tablets. Now remember that when you're giving an IV, 30 seconds is a long time to be pushing a med. 10 seconds and less it may seem like a long time to us, but it's way too fast. This is a medication that you want to push slowly over 30 seconds. You need to let it go into the body really slowly, and that's what's going to minimize the side effects and reactions. Uh, if additional doses are needed, you can call medical control right now. It's in our protocols, only up to 4 milligrams, and it's not so likely that you're going to need to give a whole lot of more, a whole lot more. The big point here is considering other treatable causes, that if they have nausea and vomiting, it's very often going to be connected with other things that we need to work on. It's probably not something that's going to be missed by any of our paramedics. Um, you're not going to miss it. But when we're just talking about the Zofran in a training session like this, we just have to make sure that we're not talking about, they got nausea, vomiting, give some Zofran, cookbook medicine. We got to consider how this might be a sign, a symptom of something a lot more serious. Uh, we talked about putting the patient on a monitor because they got nausea and vomiting. Remember, remember, 
especially elderly females, diabetics, they're going to be presenting acute coronary syndromes with atypical symptoms. Atypical means they're not saying, ah, ah, my chest is crushing. So if they're, they're complaining about intractable nausea, that's a sign to get a 12 lead, especially on patients, again, who are elderly, female, diabetic, and, and those are just the, sort of the top three. How fast it works? Couple of minutes. Couple of minutes it'll start working. Zofran takes 10 minutes to 30 minutes to reach peak effectiveness, but that's a good news. So figure um, after the first few minutes, the Zofran is going to kick in. They should start feeling better, but it's something that's really going to be getting better and better and helping make them feel more and more better as you transport to the hospital. Again, this is a reminder about the ODT. Don't push the ODT packets through the foil backing. Dry hands, peel back the foil. If your hands are wet or there's other moisture in the area, as soon as you touch those uh, oral dissolving tablets at a little wafer, it's going to start dissolving, so it's no good. You place it on top of their tongue or under the tongue, and I know it says swallow if possible with saliva. It's meant to just dissolve. A lot of people say, well, if you have a patient with nausea or they're vomiting, why are you going to put something in their mouth? And I do understand that, but it is meant to just dissolve for them. Right now, we're going with the IV. Again, we may wind up switching to the ODT depending on supply chain. Uh, that's what the pharmacy tells us they have. And also, if there's something that uh, you as a paramedic have a preference, contact me, let me know. It reiterates here, nausea, vomiting may be a sign you need a 12 lead, maybe a sign of head trauma, diabetic emergency, other overdose, headache, migraine, or an inner ear disturbance this is all stuff that we may be thinking about. Liver disease, kidney failure, these are all things that uh, are primary producers of intractable nausea and vomiting. So we need to consider that and how that relates to the overall patient picture. Great thing about Zofran, doesn't typically cause sedation. So this is not going to knock a patient out. I know we said fatigue is a side effect, but fatigue isn't sedation. Uh, again, we repeat 10 minutes after IV doses and 40 minutes after IM injection, somewhere in between, that's when it's really working the best. Positive reactions, as we said, within a couple of minutes, three to five. And all routes, meaning oral, IM, IO, uh, they all have the same elimination half-life of about four hours. That's about how long it's going to last. So what do we do now? That's pretty much it. Need you to take the written exam that's going to be on EMS charts. You need to get an 80 or better. Familiarize yourself with the location of Zofran in the medication pouch in each ALS bag. Uh, we're going to be putting them on board as of June 1st. We need to have all the paramedics completed this training with a score of 80 or better on the uh, written exam, uh, online exam, uh, before we can put it online. But our target date is June 1st, so just take a look at it. If you have any comments or questions about the training or the Zofran itself, let me know. Uh, any additional protocol suggestions, things that you want to know about, things that we need to change, uh, whether it's related to Zofran or not, contact myself or Captain Myers. Other than that, thank you very much. We're making things better, putting a new med out there, hopefully taking care of our patients a little bit better, making your job a little bit easier. Thanks again.